My name is Janai Thornton, and I just want to tell you how excited I am that my team is that you all are here with us today. So we are super excited and we're grateful that you're here today. So uh, we have a great evening for y'all tonight. Um, we are not going to take up a bunch of your time, but I promise you at the end of this, we're all going to have a plan. Um, we're going to have a commitment and we're going to know what we need to do to get our wills done. This is all about estate planning. And so just the fact that you're here is huge. Like this is a really, really big first step. So we're super excited that you're here. So again, Janai Thornton, and um, I'm assuming some of y'all must follow me. And um, if you're familiar with us at all, um, we are Thank Me Later. And we focus on financial educated. We focus on financial education for amazing Black women just like you. And one of our big initiatives for the last two years, y'all see my shirt. Hopefully y'all can read it. Black Women Will, where we have, look at y'all, look at y'all with, <laughs> with the cute hoodies on. Listen, I'm in menopause. I couldn't wear my hoodie today, y'all. I had to go with the jersey. Couldn't play and be up here sweating with y'all tonight. But um, the last couple of years, we've had a really big focus and push on helping professional, educated, amazing Black women like you get your estate planning documents done. So we have a great evening for you. I'm not going to talk a lot. I'm going to go ahead and get started. So first, a couple housekeeping things. Um, unless you're talking, please stay muted. You are more than welcome to come on camera with us. We would love to see your beautiful faces. Um, we are going to be using a system called Menti. Menti. Um, and so you're going to need your cell phones tonight, right? Because we're going to be asking some questions and you're going to respond with Menti. But don't worry, it's going to be easy. We're going to tell you exactly how to log in, how to respond to our questions. And... Um, that's really all that you need to get started. Um, oh, please leave your questions in the chat. So this time is for you this evening. Because again, the fact that you're here is a huge first step. And we are here to guide you along on your journey and your commitment. You know, we have a whole new standard on your commitment to help you get your estate planning documents done. So you see Tiana Ridgeway, who is our marketing director and um, Hello. Who, who always makes me look good out here in these streets. So um, thank you, Tiana. You always take good, such good care of me. You and make also, it easy, <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. But um, Tiana, I think we're ready to go, right? I think we're ready to get everybody started. I think we are all set. So I'm going to be controlling our slides. We have a brief presentation. But as Janai mentioned, please leave your questions in the chat. Uh, we have a time for Q&A at the end. So we'll have plenty of time to answer any of your questions. Um, but you can keep them in the chat and we'll kind of start from the top and um, get through all of those. So I'm going to share my screen. We can dive on in. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay. You you need a will. <laughs> you need a will. Okay. You need a will. Yes. 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 And we're gonna help you on your roadmap to create one today. Yes. This is the year, Janai. We get this it is the year. Done. This, this is, is it. We're gonna get it done today. This is the year, y'all. Yes. And I'll say from my own experience, real quick, it's really not as hard mm -hmm. as it may feel right it's emotional uh barriers you might need to overcome but once you met the commitment which we're going to do today yeah it's it's go time so we're going to lay it out for you guys um so, so to start out Janai, do you want to talk briefly about you being on ricky smiley and kind of the experience that you had recently on ricky smiley oh absolutely so y'all we just we, we're going to take a little creative liberty and we want to share a recent interview. I think I just did it last week on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. So hopefully if he's in your city that you all are listening to him. And this is just a way to kind of um, get our energy going the right way. And um, he and I were having a discussion on the air about wills. And um, I cannot wait for you all to hear this. So again, please, I hope you're listening to the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. And Tiana, take it away. Okay. 
Janai, could you give me a thumbs up when, when I start playing just to make sure everybody can hear? Okay. One thing, everybody, please get a will this year. I need everybody to put that on their to-do list. Please, Gary, you too. Oh, baby, please I've been having a will for about 10 years, I honey. I, I did it was a martini. I, I, got wheels. I done went down there and picked out all my stuff. I done wrote out a yep. picture and I, lay, I got everything laid down to the T. Who get this lamp, that from the from the lamp to a necklace to my uh uh to my tennis shoes. Every right. single mm -hmm. thing has been written. So and then, and then a separate will of who not to give nothing to. <laughs> yeah. And who shouldn't come, right? And, and yeah, and when women and I, I got a seating chart for my funeral. <laughs> yeah. I, I wish you would, I wish you would put some of these Negroes in a limousine and you handed them tissue and they mistreated me while I was living. I got some right. folks that's not related to me that's gonna be in them front two limousines mixed with people. Oh, I, I'm, I'm gonna do. That's we right. can do a whole segment. Let's do a whole segment on a wheel because guess what? We don't like to talk about it. True. We do not like talk to talk that. about it. But guess what? We what two things we're gonna do? We're gonna pay taxes, stay black, and die. It's gonna happen. Yeah. So if we only here talking happen. about taxes and 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 civil rights. Why we can't talk about uh, what's gonna happen when we leave? You got kids and grandkids, and and then somebody suffering your death, right? Now they got to fight with other family members over over right. a damn car. Yeah. And then all the money goes yeah. to the uh, probate court, and then the, the yeah. government Thank ends up getting you. all the money. Yeah. Yep. And now you got them folk in your business making decisions about your assets and your family. Come on, we know better than that. I'm so talking please, about, I don't, then wrote that a bitch where I got a little threefold. I know what <laughs> pictures I want in there, a video. Oh, well, <laughs> let's take a minute to reflect. Right. And, and so, um, uh, I, I appreciate Ricky's humor because y'all know he's hilarious and we certainly will not be talking about seating charts. I mean, this man said he's going to have a seating chart at his funeral. We, we're not going to go that far, but I appreciate the fact that Gary, y'all know Gary, Gary with the T who said he's had a will for over 10 years. And then Ricky's like, what are you talking about? I've been had mine done. So um, I do, I appreciate the commitment, Tiana, and how important it is because um, it is, it's a gift. It's, it's actually, it's a gift. You know, it's not just business, it's a gift. Yes. And I love how he said, like, we talk about all these other things. Why are we not talking about this? Why not? Why, why right. can't we talk about it? He said, well, we know for sure. We're going to stay black. We're going to pay taxes and we're going to die. Done. That's on the list. So we can certainly be prepared and do what we need to do. So, um, so thank you for that. And, and again, thank you for getting us kicked off that way. Yes. So do you want to go ahead on and share the Black Women Will Sizzle Reel or you want me to? Yeah, I'm okay. going to just, uh, we have it in a slide. So this is about us. Uh, yeah. Janai gave us a, a preview, but um, really thank me later. We are a source to help Black women build and transfer wealth. And our Black Women Will initiative is focused on estate planning giving women opportunities to complete their wills so they can leave a legacy. And we do this through our signature event, which we're about to show our sizzle reel from last year. Um, and shout out to Lauren on the team who led that um, amazing, amazing event. And we're going to do another one this year, but we want to show it to you guys so we, you guys can see, you know, what we're doing, but we urge you to start now. Yeah. Like we can't wait we can't wait so we um help women complete their wills through educational programs such as this and the event um, which i will share a quick sizzle reel no, i can't hear it mm -mm. Mm -mm. you can't hear no it started but then it stopped Oh, uh, okay. Wait, what about now? Okay, we're going to drop this in the chat. <laughs> okay, we'll just drop that in the chat. So Black Women Will really is our initiative that y'all see my cute little jersey that I have on where when we knew so many women like you who needed help getting your wills done. And so instead of us just talking about it, um, in Atlanta, we came up with an event where we've done it for the last two years where we prepare wills, healthcare directives, and power of attorney for professional black women for free. 
So this past November, we did about 88 wills in about five hours with 65 lawyers that volunteered their time. And so the goal is just really to raise awareness. Obviously, we want to help people get their wills done, but we can't get everybody's will done at Black Women Will. Yes, we're going to do it again this year, um, but you can't wait. So again, it, it's really it's really about awareness. And I just wanted to take a minute and share my personal story. Um, my grandfather died when I was 12 and my mom, who was... Um, a bit, I was going to say a little non-traditional. My mom was very non-traditional as a parent. And she took me with her when she went to the reading of the will from my grandfather. So I'm literally 12 years old. And so it was interesting. My mom's three other siblings were in the room and my step-grandmother was in the lawyer's office too. And just to see the family dynamic as it all played out. And I could tell my step-grandmother did not know everything that my grandfather had. Um, she was happy and hot at the same time, you know, because she had no idea. And my grandfather by no means was a wealthy man when he passed away, but he owned a few rental properties. My, uh, my step-grandmother had no idea what he had. But I just appreciate the fact that he was not educated, never graduated from high school, but he had a plan for his family. And he had an expectation of what the order would be. So I was super grateful for that. And then fast forward, when I was 29, my mother passed away and I was the one in charge. And I'm just grateful, um, you know, I, I, I'm adopted. I had the most amazing life in, in the whole wide world. Um, but the greatest gift my mother ever gave me was the fact that she had a will in all of her documents in order. So as difficult as it was to lose my mom at 29 and I was grieving, um, she just made things so much easier for me. Like I had everything that I needed so I could wrap up the business very quickly and allowed me the opportunity just to focus on grieving. So part of getting your wills done or you getting your mother's aunt, sister, or cousin to get their will done too, um, part of it is the business we have to do it. But I really want you to think about it. It's a gift. It absolutely positively is a gift. And um, you'll help, you're helping your family through a very, very difficult time. And you all can jump in the trap because I, I know you all, everybody has a story about some family drama that has happened because somebody did not leave direction. Okay, and that's what this is really all about. So if you have any situation, you had a loved one that died and you had a um, kind of a crazy family situation, if you're willing to share it, you don't have to give us all the details, but share that with share that with us in the chat, because that's exactly what we're trying to avoid here. Um, and. You know, we at Think Me Later, our goal was really to try to change the mindset behind it, because culturally as black people, we have a lot of fear. You know, we don't really talk about this. So that's why um, when you get a minute, take a look at our video. We wanted to share it with you so you could see how we intentionally change the energy. Y'all see my little, you know, my Black Women Will jersey, bright pink. You know, they have their hoodies on. And um, that's also just the kind of, you see Lauren showing hers, Courtney is showing hers. But that's really just part of the fact of us helping to change the energy and the mindset. And we want to be on this journey with you. We want to be on this journey with you. So, um, Tian, I'm going to show the back of my journey, jer um, my um, hoodie with everybody. And you can Yay. share. Yeah. And you can share how people can join us, too. So it says Black Women Will. We will leave a legacy. We will prepare for life events. We'll provide and protect. We will build generational wealth. We will set the vision. We will execute the plan. We will be responsible. We will step up and show out. We will be a leader in, in our families. We will transition our assets the right way and we will get it done by any means necessary. So yeah. if you, yeah, <laughs> yes. Tiana is snapping her fingers over there. So if you need to join us in our community, and get your mindset right. Maybe you need to get one of these for your aunt, your sister, your cousin. Um, so what I'm saying is love it. Um, Tiana, go ahead and share. So we're gonna share real quick. Um, you can join us um, because you need to be part of our community to walk through this process. You can be flying cute and do this, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, you can do it with a smile on your face and you can do it and be proud because it's certainly something to be proud of. So we definitely want to make sure that you are able to join us. So you go to blackwomenwell.com. You can get your hoodie too. Um, maybe you, you got a little group of y'all that y'all committed to doing this together. I really want y'all to do that. All right. Yes. We just dropped that. The hyperlink was being a little funky, but we just dropped that in there. Blackwomenwell.com slash shop. So you should be able to click it and yeah. get yours. Yeah. And, and get yours. And when you all get yours and you begin your journey, please share that with us because we want to know where you are on your journey. We are here to support you on your journey. When it's over, like not just this part, when y'all have your wills absolutely positively done. Mm -hmm. um, next thing I want to mention, Tiana, with everybody, will you talk to them about the estate planning playbook? Yes, yes. So our estate planning playbook, again, we are on a mission to help we say Black women because that's who we're speaking to, but we're not excluding anybody else. That's no. just who we are speaking to directly. Um, so we've created a resource called the Black Women Will Estate Planning Playbook. I'll share my screen shortly. Yeah. Um, but it is your first step. If you feel uh, overwhelmed, you don't know where to start, you have some fears, some mindset shifts to address, we help you not only address those mindset shifts, but really get organized to be able to make the process easier. So right. rather you go through an attorney and we give some resources to find an estate attorney, because um, as Janai says, attorneys are like doctors. So you want to work with an estate planning attorney. Um, or if you go through uh, another method like a legal Zoom, which will drop all these resources in the chat, right. um, you we will help you get organized for that. Mm -hmm. So that whatever method you take, you have all the information, you outline what assets you have, right. aka your balance sheet, you have a list of contacts that, you know, you would want to uh, be a part of this. So we outline all of the information and let me stop talking about it and yeah. pull it up. So that and you in the chat, anybody already have the estate plan and playbook? Do you have it? Because we have it available. Anybody have it already? Y'all have our estate planning playbook? I do. Yeah. Hey, come on. Who said that? Who said that? I, I have mine. Curly. Curly Robinson. Okay. Thank you, Curly Robinson. So um, we're dropping that in the chat too. We've made it available to you all for free. Um, don't be intimidated by the number of pages. Please don't do that. We just want to make sure that we were really thorough. Just download it off the app. So yeah, please go to, you can click on the link that we dropped in the chat. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is, is just, again, making sure you feel comfortable with all the terms, right? Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that you have an overview. Um, um, now we want to get you ready. You know, you want to get it completed by what, you know, and I want you to get your will done. We're going to talk about what your healthcare directive is. Want to make sure you get all of this done. Do you need to schedule a family meeting? Like what is all the things that you have to do? But again, we're not going to be overwhelmed. We manage a, a hundred thousand things. We can get this done. Um, Tiana, you want to talk about the fears? Yeah, yeah. So we um, did a session Shout out to anybody that was a part of the session last year yes. um, called Black Wills Matter last year. This was our first um, truly understanding how big of a hurdle this is for so many. Right. Um, and so we identified four major fears that people face with estate planning. So to kind of high level, talk about them, fear of mortality. So just not wanting to talk about death, don't want to think about what happens after your death, but our way to overcome that for the, for the short term is to focus on what matters while you're living. Mm -hmm. So your healthcare directive, your power of attorney, and I'll just share a quick story. I'm not gonna cry, uh, but my mom is kind of going through a lot right now, um, some challenges. And literally her doctor asked me today, does she, does she have a healthcare directive? And though I'm the point person and she made it clear that I'm the point person, if she, she wasn't in the state to be able to say um, that I'm the point person, who knows? It could have been a hot mess. So it's so important to get that document completed. Yeah. It is a part of your estate plan, yeah. um, in addition to your will and your power of attorney, which handles more of the, the business, the legal real estate um, direction. So 
fear of mortality is one fear that you may experience in, in this uh, estate planning playbook. We outline, you know, how to overcome it, how to journal some thoughts to, to really unpack why do you feel that way and to be able to move forward. Mm -hmm. So for fear of mortality, fear of perfection, just wanting it to be perfect, wanting to think all things through, but the call out here is that these are evolving documents. Right. So as your life, <clears throat> excuse me, as your life evolves, the documents can evolve and you can update them as needed. But the most important thing is to get it done. Then also the fear of organization. So um, that may be, you know, just kind of feeling overwhelmed about going through and thinking about all your bank accounts and retirement accounts and assets and all of that, or may feel like you think you don't have enough, um, you know, you kind of may feel some potentially shame or regret, yeah. but we're just saying, let all that go. This is mm -hmm. not uh, an emotional, it's emotional to overcome, but you just had to get it done. So mm -hmm. move past those fears yeah. and know that your worth is more than what would be on your balance sheet. But this is going to be a true gift, as Janai said, to your family. And then the last is the fear of cost. So if you don't know anybody that's created a will, like when I, before I joined Thank Me Later, had no idea of anybody that created a will. So had no idea of the cost, but it really may not be as bad as you think or as, as much as you think, especially if you have a simple will, you don't have a bunch of assets, um, like complex assets, mm -hmm. you know, it could be really affordable and we're going to provide some resources to help you um, manage that. So that's kind of the four fears. That's kind of what's included in this estate planning playbook. We have journal prompts to go in, in deep. So the intention here is for you to like print this out or journal it on your own time um, to be able to unpack what you need. And then we talk about like what's your dream team. So who will be the person in charge as it relates to your healthcare directive and right. your power of attorney and right. your will? Um, so we kind of write out some of the ways to think about it you know Ooh. who to choose kind yes. of it doesn't have to be your family yes um, and other things to keep in mind in regards to building out these key roles um as part of um, your estate plan um right. and then we have a space for you to kind of write out important information um to kind of just get into the mindset of this is the information that will come up when you go through the process. So again, the whole point of this estate plan and playbook is to be able to get you prepared so that you're really saving time and money and when you're like ready to actually create the will because you've all done all of this work up front. Right. Um, you know, Krista just said something important in the chat, Tiana. She just talked about how all her um, estate planning documents were free and she was able to get that through her employer, which, mm. you know, that doesn't surprise me at all because through your benefits, a lot of times you can have free or reduced legal fees. Um, why not get your will done with that? So that, that that's the homework assignment for everybody today. Uh, please contact HR, look at your benefits to see if you have reduced or free legal services because why wouldn't you take advantage of that? That's a perfect opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing, Tiana, I just kind of want to level set for everybody. I don't want people to see all those pages and feel overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do the pages that pertain to you, that are going to support you and help you on this journey. All of that may not pertain to you. Um, and maybe you're not like, I'm not going to write all that out. I need, I'm kind of a spreadsheet girl, like what? Whatever is your method, don't allow it to stop you from getting this done. Please don't allow you. Um, one more personal thing, Tiana, that I forgot that I wanted to share was um, because my mother died when I was young, um, my kids, I think my kids were four and eight when my mom died. And I didn't have a will, but because my intention was that something had happened to me and my husband, that my kids would go to my mom. And so because she died so early, I was like, wait a minute, that kind of messed up my whole plan that was in my head. So for those of you who are in charge of somebody else, you know, you have minor children, you have adult children with special needs. That's what your will does. This is not just about money. Money is just a piece of it. Your will's job is to give people direction, right? 
And so that's what it is. And so one other page that I really want y'all to focus on in that um, estate planning playbook, remember where Tiana showed you all like the, the important people, like the executor, you saw that person or the, um, the person who's going to make the decisions for you on your health care directive. Uh, please take your time and make those decisions and don't feel bad if the people you're picking are not related to you. That's typical, honestly. I know a lot of people are heavy hearted. Oh my God, you know, I don't trust my sister. I don't want, don't feel bad. Very typical. Who is equipped for the job? Okay. Remember this is business, it's not emotional. Like who can step up and stand in for you um, if either you're sick or you have passed away or if you're helping your mother or someone else make these decisions too, okay? So don't get overwhelmed, ladies. Yes, yes. We just wanted to provide a guide to get you started. Yes. However you utilize it, keep what resonates, don't utilize whatever doesn't. But we just want to help remove any barriers mm -hmm. um, that might you might be facing. And mm -hmm. just want to call out that we want to be a support system for you all. So as you begin this process, either for yourself or if it's done already, shout out to you, if it's done already and you're helping your family, please engage with us in the slides. We'll share how to keep in contact with us. You can always yeah. contact us on social media and if you're a part of the community, um, but we want to hear about how it's going. If there's hurdles that you're facing, if you it's know. roadblocks, like we yeah. are here to support you. So yeah. please lean into us um, because we want to support you as much as possible. Tiana, I don't know if you just saw what Brenda put in the chat. She said you should put this on your vision board to get this done this year. Come on, Brenda. I know. Courtney's like, yep. Yeah, come yeah. on. That's a great idea. Whatever it's going to take, you know, you we, we have to have, we have to set a new standard for ourselves. We have to have a new commitment and we're, we're going to get it done this year. We're definitely mm -hmm. going to get it done. That makes me happy. Yeah. Um, because I know all of you are not going to be able to stay with us the whole time. I want to make sure that we're dropping in these resources throughout the session. And it's just because we want to make sure that you're good. So um, don't be patient with us with the repetition because we want to make sure you have every tool. So um, Lauren, I'm going to ask you again, we're going to drop in the estate planning playbook because I just saw a few more people who just popped in. I want to make sure that they have that free tool from us. Um, also, if you're like, Janai, I know I'm not going to spend no money on no lawyer. That's fine. You don't have to. So um, we're going to drop in the chat. Um, maybe you feel confident. You have a very simple situation. We have a link to LegalZoom that has the core documents for you. Um, and they provide guidance for you. you. That might be an option for you. Know thyself. You got a lot going on. Please don't use those. But if you have a very simple situation and you want to spend, Courtney, remind me, I know it's, it's less than $200, isn't it? How much is it? It's $249, but that comes with uh, attorney assistance. So okay. So $249 to get your documents done with attorney assistance. So we're going to drop that in the chat now too. We'll drop it in again later. And then also, um, we're also going to drop in the chat now um, some other resources. When you get your will done, Please don't put it under your bed in a filing cabinet that nobody knows where it is. Don't, please don't do that. So we have a link to um, an Amazon store for safes and other resources that are going to help you stay organized. That's a critical part of this, right? So we're going to share that with you all too. So again, um, please make sure you all copy those links. But that legal Zoom, you cannot be mad at spending less than $250. Mm -hmm. Janie Coleman said, yes, yes, girl. Come on now. Like I said, we, we're, we're removing all the barriers today. No, no excuses, right? We have a new standard. So we want to know what your barriers are so we can figure out, we can give you the solutions for that. All right. What's next, Tiana? All right. What's next? So we're going to dive on in. Um, we will be sharing the replay. So if you're not able to join the full time, totally understand. You can catch yeah. the replay and we'll also be sending um, an email with the links and some resources. So stay tuned for all of that. But um, to dive in, let me share my screen. All right. So what do you need for this session? Um, 
So open mind and self-awareness, you know, just assessing where you are. We'll do some self-assessment so that you can see what action you need to take based on where you are. Um, really recommend a journal or somewhere to type your notes. This is not ideally, you know, if you're driving, be safe. But if you are at home and stationed somewhere, we really want this to be interactive. Uh, we want this to be actionable. It's not just, you know, sit and listen to a presentation. We really want you to be thinking about what steps you need to take in order to get this done in 2023 for yourself, but also to be your sister's keeper and get somebody else to do it too. Yeah. Um, you'll need, uh, Janai mentioned Mentee Meter, which is a really cool tool that we use for engagement. So you'll just need your cell phone to access that. And then we mentioned the estate planning playbook. Um, would love for you guys to uh, sit with that and it'll be in the chat. So that's kind of what you need for this session. And we want to hear from you all. Like, why are you here? You know, if you can drop in the chat and share, you know, well, one, we're thankful that you're here. Um, we're thankful that you showed really up. Grateful you're here. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. you showed up for yourself and you showed up Huge for your first family. Step. Yeah. But why are you here? We want to hear, we want to hear in the chat so we can take a minute to um kind of see what you ladies and maybe some gents are saying. Yeah. Um so Lakeisha said, absolutely so important to have everything in one place and making sure someone knows. That's the most important thing after the documents are completed. Um, here's some barriers. Kelly said, barrier is her husband will not work with her throughout mm -hmm. the process. He has yeah. many reservations. So that's very, very common issue. Gotta, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll share some tips on how to navigate that. Yeah. Um, I want to have a good financial foundation. This is something everyone needs, but avoid. I want to get it done. Definitely. I want to update our will. Um, love this. Love this. So thank you, ladies and gents. If there's any gentlemen on here, oh, we did open it up to everyone. Um, so please continue to drop these in the chat. This is all really great mm -hmm. info. Um, and just kind of helped us all to see like where we are and and how we how we got to this point and how we can keep each other accountable. And, and, and Tiana, I appreciate the the honesty because I just saw Dawn's comment and she said that I've been putting it off for too long. And it's it's just so easy to do, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like, oh, I'm gonna get to it. You know, right. I'm gonna get to it. And then culturally, we have not been taught the urgency that it's just a standard thing, not like an emergency, like something's gonna happen. But we just haven't been taught that it's when you become an adult, and when you start your family and have kids, or when you begin to acquire assets, even if you have nothing but a bank account, that you should do this. Mm -hmm. If someone had been teaching us that, and we've been knowing that for generations, we would be behaving differently. Absolutely. And so, yes, you're right. You are here for your kids, you know, and your grandchildren and your parents, because again, you, this is all about having some order. This is really about order. Mm -hmm. Love that. Okay, so want us to set an intention because again, yeah. this is interactive. Yeah. So by the end of this session, I'll answer this question, please, in the chat or write it down and or oh, yeah. Um, by the end of this session, I would like to blank. What would is you it, all like to do by the end of this session? Order your will software, schedule an appointment, make a family, schedule a family meeting with your okay. siblings set a personal deadline like when are you what's the drop dead date they're like i'm gonna have it signed sealed delivered by x date right complete your health care directive that's a good one mm -hmm. thank you mariah but set your intention yes you have it's not great you know i'm gonna family will play nice yeah but an estate attorney, that's a big one too. Mm -hmm. I have a list of documents that I need. Okay, no, we're going to make sure that you get organized. Yeah. Love it. So. Um, any any other ones to call out? Thank you ladies for, for dropping those in. Yeah, it's really important. Set your intention because we're not here just to talk to y'all today. Um, of course, we're happy to be here to talk to y'all. But again, this is this is a call to action Zoom. Mm -hmm. Yep. Get it done. Have a plan and move forward. 
Perfect. Okay. We're going to have a plan to move forward then. Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So these are high level, some of our goals. Um, so again, we're going to go through this presentation. We'll have time for Q and A, yes. but really want you all to um, spend some time once we send the, the link out to this, spend some time with these slides. Uh, there are some slides that are more like what to journal on, what to think on. Mm -hmm. um, so we won't like spend a ton of time on some of these slides, but we right. want you all to um, be able to digest all of it on your own time and really sit with it. So high level, some of our goals is to help you all identify some of the barriers that might be keeping you from completing this right. and create an actionable plan to get it done this year before Q2 ends. But <laughs> this year is the most important. Um and to also encourage your loved ones to do the same, especially if you have aging parents or people you will be responsible for. Right. We want to start thinking about what's on your balance sheet. So again, those lists of assets and accounts that you own and who would inherit those. And then be thinking about what we're calling your legacy dream team. So the executor of your will, the, the agent in your power of attorney, the guardian of your minor children or your special needs children, if you have them, um, want to just start thinking about those things. And then also how to find and vet a lawyer or identify other methods to complete your simple will. And yeah. excuse me, I don't know what's going on with my screen with these yellow, these yellow things, but just act like you guys don't see them. <laughs> like, where did that come from? What saved me from getting my will done up until now is that it's never been something that was openly talked about. I feel like there is something uh, me experiencing that in my family at a younger age, I was very familiar with the fact that I needed to get it done, but it was never a discussion to where um, I felt the need or priority to do it. So I'm very excited at the opportunity to have this created for me and to identify uh, just the, the importance of, of doing it prior to anything going on, just the, the preparedness of it all. I'm really excited and happy that um, we have this opportunity to do this today. Yes, that was just a quick clip, <clears throat> excuse me, from Kirsten, who yeah. attended our Black Women Will experience and got her will done, talking about the importance of normalizing this and talking about it in our community so that we can get it done and don't have so much chaos when folks pass away. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing real quick and then share again because these um, yellow lines are going to drive me crazy. <laughs> What is happening over there? I don't know. It's being a little, a little funky. Um, Ladies, pull your cell phones out in a minute. We're gonna need them. Yes. Um, you guys can see my screen again. Yes. Yeah, so uh -huh. I'll just kind of walk you guys through what this roadmap is, and then we'll take it to Minty and kind of see where we are. So we've kind of broken up a few different starting points that you may have. So to go with the roadmap theme where are you on the road are you in the driveway where you're like level one I don't really think I need a will or you don't feel like you have enough assets to create one you don't feel like you're ready so be mentally thinking are you level one <clears throat> are you level two where you're like on the street you're open to completing it you just kind of don't know where to start a little overwhelming Right. Um, are you level three? You're on the highway. Like you're, you have a good foundation. You may already have a will and you need to update it. Um, where kind of are you? You just may need some additional support. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last on this, on this roadmap, you might be on your road trip. You are hitting go. You're in the process of creating your will and you might need a little help completing, a helping a loved one complete theirs. Mm -hmm. um, so Make a mental note, and then we're going to get into Minty to kind of see where we all are. So again, are you on the driveway, on the street, on the highway, or on the road trip? So that is our first so you, Minty question. If you go to Minty.com and use this code. Yeah. And let, us know, let us know if you have any problem getting into Minty. Super, super easy to use. Yes. And so go to Minty.com. Type in that code and then our first question. Oh, somebody's already in there. I'm going to do it myself. So again, um, if you guys can't see, it's code 72328318. Okay. All right. So we got a range. A lot of folks are on the street. 
you, you know you need a will you just don't know where to start but you are right. in the right place okay we have some folks on the highway you got your foundation going amazing just need some support mm -hmm. a few folks in the driveway you do need a will mm -hmm. and we're going to help you get it done <laughs> yeah and then we have some folks on a road trip who they're in the process, they're getting it done. They just need a little help, maybe getting the loved ones to complete their will. Mm -hmm. So love that. Thank you all for this engagement. Looks like there's a lot of folks on the street, Janai. So okay. we, we can help them kind of overcome what that, that, that's a um, that's a good place to be on the street. Mm -hmm. We're good. We're You're good. in motion. You're in motion. Um, love that. While you're transitioning to the next slide, I want to talk to the people who are in the driveway right now. So let me tell you if this is how you know if you need a will. You need a will if you have minor children. You need a will if you have adult children with special needs or if maybe like your grandparents, mother, somebody lives with you that you're in charge of. You need a will if you have a house. Mm -hmm. okay and it could be a simple will don't think about it as it's complicated because a lot of people tell me Janai I don't have enough money that's not the point the point is if something happens to you who is going to be in charge who is going to be in charge to call your mortgage company deal with your car close your bank accounts we have to give somebody the power to do that mm -hmm. And if you don't give somebody the power to do that, then your family has to go to probate court and it's a pain. It's a lot of work. So most of us adults need a will. Sometimes you can get around it. For example, if like all your bank accounts, you already went ahead and put your sister's name on. Them. And then your son's name is already on your house. Then you, you might not need one. The majority of us do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think also, you know, going through the process myself, it outlines like, do you want to be buried? Like, do you want to be cremated? Like, it goes right. beyond the assets that right. you have. And That's huge. How do you want your final arrangements to be? And though yeah. it it may not like be the most exciting thing to think about, you just right. want to be able, as to I said earlier, to create the order and have your final wishes executed. And if you don't get it in writing in right. this little document, mm -hmm. there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. Right. Tiana, it's funny that you say that because I remember when um, David and I, David's my husband, y'all, when we got our documents, done, I think I'm on my third revision now because my kids were really young. So anyway, when we got them done, he said that he wanted to be cremated. Let me tell you something. There is no way in the world without a legal document that my mother-in-law would have David cremated because she's not, they bury people. They don't cremate. I'm like, we have to put this in writing. I can imagine what the issue would be with my mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. um, just because that that's just not what she believes. You know, they believe she believes in bearing. So I say all that to say that's a huge fight with my mother-in-law that I don't have to have because it's not what I want. It's what David wants. Absolutely. So something that small can become something huge. Mm -hmm. And when folks are grieving, like they don't got time to be fighting about that. Oh my God, <laughs> don't do it. Oh, this, this is a good mentee question, question here, Tiana. I love this one. Yes. What has delayed you from completing your will up until now? Mm. A few procrastination. We are being self-aware. Yes. Mm -hmm. Being honest with ourselves. Tell the truth. But we're going to move forward. Right. Not you have enough assets, but as Janai mentioned, if you have a bank account, you do. You have enough right. Um, We have time and understanding, lack of knowledge, not sure where to start, need attorney referral in your area. But now you know you, you can have attorney referral or right. you might consider a legal Zoom or you might look into, you know, what your employer offers. Right. Lack I appreciate y'all being so honest about the procrastination, though. Mm hmm. Because that's what a lot of y'all are saying. I appreciate that. Because, you know, you then, one, you're just like, OK, let me call myself out. <laughs> yeah. I Thank y'all for being honest about that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Letting life get in the way. Mm hmm. All right. All right. A few more minty questions. Thank you. Yeah. 
So we talked a bit about the different fears. Again, the fear of mortality, fear of perfection, fear of organization, fear of cost. So in the spirit of um, assessing where we are, let us know kind of what fear are you dealing with, if any of these. Um, so fear of cost is a big one. Yeah. Fear of perfection, wanting to do it right, but no, they, they can be updated. Those documents can be updated for sure. Fear of organization. So Tiana, while everybody's weighing in, let me go ahead and kind of just talk really briefly about the fear of cost. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it depends on, the cost depends upon the complexity of your situation. So complexity meaning, Maybe you have a blended family. Maybe you inherited some land from your grandmother and it's in Florida and you live in Atlanta now and there's like four other people on the title. Like complexity can make the costs go up. So you can pay as little as like the $250 that we talked about for the software. And then um, I have seen people pay $2,000. $2,500, $3,000. Again, um, if not a little bit more, depending upon the complexity. But you all have to remember what this doc, it's not just a piece of paper that doesn't mean anything. You know, this is something that gives a lot of direction, okay? And normally when your lawyer will do your documents, they will do your will. They'll do your healthcare directive. That means you're not dead. It just means for whatever reason, you're not able to make your own health care decisions. And they'll normally also do your power of attorney too, meaning that you're ill, um, but you need someone, want someone else to transact business on your behalf. So normally you will get all of your estate planning documents together for the one cost. Okay. So it's not just one thing. Yes. Yes. Thank you for that. All right, a few more questions. I think it's just a few. Does anyone in your family have a will? This is your immediate family, your siblings, parents. I'll say I'm I'm the first in the family to kick it off, but now I'm like, okay, we all need to, because I know I'm about to be responsible for everybody. Right. I'm not about to leave me in chaos. Right, right. And for those of you who are no, it could be even a little bit more intimidating for you, but you are the one to get things started for your family. That's why you're here. You know, you're the catalyst for your family. All right. Thank you for being honest about that. Yes. All right. A few more questions. Has anyone ever in your family talked about completing their will? Is this topic a little taboo? It's kind of want to gauge kind of what conversations have your family, you and your family, if any, have had about completing your will. Uh, not much. Yeah, we've talked about it. So it's a no, we haven't talked about it. And yes, it is taboo. Yeah. Can't not taboo. any thoughts about it being taboo um, in, in their family or how to overcome that? Well, I do. I think a lot of it, um, it can be whether it's cultural, um, you know, that's kind of typical for us as black people. And then two, um, I, I always want to know why people are afraid, you know, mm -hmm. is it they think because we're talking about it, that something's going to happen to them or is it that, do they think that we're like money hungry? Mm -hmm. And so for those of you who are struggling with your spouses or with your parents, uh, my question becomes, so what is going to happen if something happens to you or me? Mm -hmm. what, 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 what's the plan? And so I, I'm always curious what people's response is. And um, for the people in my family that I know I'm going to be in charge of, you know, I've had to have very direct conversations. Um, you're not going to leave a mess for me to clean up. So let's talk about how we need to get organized and get these documents in place because you don't want to tear a family apart. And I mean, literally tear a family apart. So, um, so then what, what, what are we going to do? What's the plan? And, but I want to know why people, the older people will tell you why that makes it very uncomfortable. Yeah. Because again, I think a lot of older people think it means that they're close to death. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know how close any of us are, but we all know that we all have to transition. 
So this is not going to expedite anybody getting to death. It just means when something happens that we'll be prepared. And remember, a lot of this is what we're talking about is you could be sick and, you know, and, and need somebody to step in for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and also too, for those of you who are married and your spouse won't, even at Black Women Will, we've had women come who are married and they get their documents done and their spouse has not participated in the process. Okay, so you may want to talk to an attorney about that. One question before we go on to the next one, and Tiana, I want to move on just because it's 7.50. Mm -hmm. um, Chanelia says our communities tend to be very secretive about things they have. Yeah, because you think about it, culturally, we had to hide what we had because we were afraid if people knew as Black people, if we had accumulated anything, we could get in really big trouble for that. So we are, a, we are a culture of hiding. You know, we've been taught to hide to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. so that's why we hide. That's another reason why we hide. Someone asked a question in the chat. Do you have to have a will done by a lawyer? And you don't. Um, but the document needs to be notarized and typically witnessed. Your state will determine when, what the rules are. You know, do you need two witnesses? Do you mean one? And a witness is a disinterested party. So that, mean, that means if I was going to get my documents notarized a witness, I would take them to work. I, I couldn't have my husband be the witness or one of my adult children be the witness because they're an interested party in it. So you can draft your documents. You can go to a notary. You can have them witnessed. And now you have a legal will. You do. You do not have to go to a lawyer. That's why we provided that software. You can do that yourself. Okay. But every state matters. I see Shernelia is here, Tiana. That is the perfect. The perfect <laughs> okay. Hey, Shernelia. Hey, Shernelia. So we are going to have um, a brief uh, estate planning live coaching session with Shernelia. Um, so we wanted to make sure you guys saw, you know, yourself and somebody and to be able to in real time kind of work through any barriers you all might be facing. So, so let me give, give a little background and context real quick. So Shanili and I, we actually worked together. Well, first of all, I knew her. She was a student at North Carolina A&T. Aggie, Aggie Pride. Aggie Pride. We're both Aggies. So she was a student at A&T and y'all, she was low-key stalking me to come start working for me, right? So um, she she doesn't like when I say it, but it was true. She was like, oh, someone else said Aggie Pride. Okay, Krista, Aggie Pride. So she was low-key um, stalking me and she ended up um, coming to intern for me because I'm, I'm a CPA. I'm an accountant in the entertainment industry. This thank me later. That's, that, that's the second side, the second part of who I am. So anyway, when I got to meet Shernelia and um, we just started talking, I began to learn about a lot about her family and her family owns land. And then I was like, girl, do you like, does your, do y'all have a will? Does your family have a will? And Shanelia, you said. I don't know. <laughs> you do, and tell me, cause it's you, it's you and your parents. You have a sister, just you and your sister, right? Right. Yeah. And so your, your father, he won't talk about it. He won't tell you like how, what, what's the situation? So it's more so my father doesn't want to talk about it. Um, like I said earlier, he's very, very secretive yeah. about um, what we have. Mm -hmm. um, and anytime that I try to bring it up, he's like, well, you just have to come and watch me, watch what I'm doing and kind of learn from that way. Mm -hmm. um, so a little bit of background. My dad is a farmer. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what he means by like, come and just watch what he's doing to kind of learn mm -hmm. more about what we have and um, all the properties that we have. And so what, how does your mom deal with it, with your dad? <sighs> my mom, I think my mom just lets it be. She mm -hmm. doesn't, um, she doesn't really entertain it too much. She, mm -hmm. she wants to know, but I don't think she knows 
the right way and how to ask okay him how or what is it that we have and I even I think maybe a few years ago 2020 mm-hmm. when I think me and you talked about it yeah and you gave me like some documents and stuff mm-hmm. like that to yeah. kind of help me prep mm-hmm. to get my parents so I I started out with the simplest thing and I was like you know let me ask for what all bank accounts do you have yeah two years later I still don't know what mm-hmm. bank accounts they have mm-hmm. And so I know because you're an adult, you're over 30, mm-hmm. married, two kids, and obviously you should have cousins because, you know, mm-hmm. this is family land. Have you ever right. talked with your cousins about this too? Yes, I have. Mm-hmm. And mo- most of my cousins, um, they're old. They're all older than I am. Mm-hmm. So me and my sister are the two younger cousins. Okay. And they, I think they have talked with their parents to a certain extent about some of the things right but my sister and I haven't been privy to all of those conversations either Mm -hmm. and so where are you now like do you know what the next step is are you like girl I am too tired I don't have the energy I got my husband and these kids that's where I am I'm just Mm -hmm. like I'm too tired I don't want Mm -hmm. like I want to do it and I want to get it done yeah but I feel like it's pulling teeth and yeah. trying to get this done right um and have you ever said to your father you know this is like pulling teeth have like how direct can you be with your dad um I think I can be pretty direct with him okay but mm-hmm. I still think even in my directness he would not mm-hmm. budge much mm-hmm. he's not gonna budge okay. and, and I, go ahead I think it also comes with to me being a female Mm. because my, so my dad and his dad had conversations with my great uncle, um, but the women were never really involved in that conversation. So my aunt aren't as privy to everything that my dad knows. Which, which is kind of typical, you know, I love my mm-hmm. grandfather dearly. He was very sexist, <laughs> extremely sexist, right. which is typical of that generation. Wow. So what's your next step? I think the next step is just to try to start the conversation again. Mm-hmm. Um, because this isn't new to my dad. Um, right. He went through probate court with his uncles. Mm. Um, his dad had a will, so that part of it wasn't difficult. So he knows right. knows how difficult and time consuming and costly this could be. Yeah. Um. So just putting it in perspective for him when mm-hmm. it comes to my sister and I. Yeah. That this is what we want to do, so we don't have to endure the same cost mm-hmm. and stress and that the, he has and the pain too. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if, if it were me, I would definitely be leaning in on your mom some too you know, because I know she doesn't feel empowered, but just for her to say, I I know this is not the legacy that you want to leave for us, the Mm -hmm. work, you know, Um, how do you think we're supposed to get this done? And then just talk to your mom about committing to a deadline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it is, this is, this is typically why Black families lose so much. Mm-hmm. You know, why we lose the house, why we lose the land, why we lose it, because we don't do this. And I think that's exactly what I would tell him, that you're literally putting everything that your family has worked for for generations is literally being put at risk right now. Because it's the truth. It's not just some sort of scare tactic. You know, it, yeah. it happens all the time because it's going to be a lot of work. And because he knows everything, you know, the information mm-hmm. leaves when he's gone. Right. Yeah. So um, I would start with that and, and just say, you know, it is, it's an act of love. You know, if, if you love us the way that you say that you do, then you will do this to make sure that mom is good and that we are good too. Right. And it, it is, it's difficult, you know, for those of you who are now the young adults and mm-hmm. you all are adults and they're still looking at you all like your kids. Yeah. Yeah. And it's difficult, you know, but now you're, but you're not, you're, 
you know, over 30 and you got a husband and two kids, like you're an adult. And so you might have to remind them. I, I'm, I'm a parent of adult kids. My kids have to remind me sometimes too. <laughs> so, um, but that's the, that's the strategy that I would take. And I would, okay. I would be very clear with my mom. Like we're going to, we're getting ready to get started now. Okay. Yeah. We're getting it done this year. And, yeah. and I, I think I've been trying to do everything like away from home, but I mm -hmm. think it's going to take me. You're going to have to go home have to, to go sure. and at least spend a week where I'm just kind of dedicating time yeah. to doing nothing but this. Yeah. And I, I suggest that for those of you who are having problems with your aunts, uncles, grandparents, whomever it is, you are not going to be able to do this on the phone. They don't even do business that way. Mm-hmm. OK, so you're going to have to take a very direct, respectful approach and then just ask. So if you're not going to do it, how do you think this is going to play out? Are you OK? Because, you know, the state or the county, whomever, they're just going to they're going to get the land. Is Are you OK with that? Are you OK with that? And just, you know, I would start there. But mm -hmm. your mom is really important in this. She has a lot of power and she just don't realize it. Right. Yeah, she's got a ton of power. Yeah. So I hope this was helpful. Any other questions for us, Shanelia? Thank you for being honest about your family situation, girl. No problem. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. No, no, no. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Tiana, because it's already eight o'clock, did you want to start going into some Q&A? Oh, maybe write a letter. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right. Is it Kia Washington? That's a really good idea. If you can't think that you can say it, mm -hmm. Brenda said, thank you for sharing, Shanelia. That might thank be good to write that heartfelt letter to your parents. That's a really good idea. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's a really good idea. It's Kia. You were you were correct. Yeah, okay. so that way you your thoughts are clear. Right. And um you know, you don't miss anything mm -hmm. because, you know, you just got to shoot your shot. <laughs> right. And you want to make sure, sure when you shoot that shot, <laughs> you got everything in there. Right. And because the letter is there, mm -hmm. you know, we say things, it goes one in the air and out the other, but just right. he can pick it up, put it down, you pray over it, anoint it, come back. Boom, you know, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a really good point. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Yeah, uh -huh. that's a really good idea. And the other thing, too, that I would suggest for all of you, if you have a situation like Shanelia, you're, um, you're, you know, you always talk about Big Mama's house or the few acres of land somebody left in Florida or something, you might need to have a family meeting with your cousins or someone else. Not all of them, just who you know, more like-minded, a little business oriented, because we may have to have a plan related to some sort of family asset as well, okay? All right, Tiana, are we going to Q&A? What are we doing now? We have like two more slides to share. Um, okay. To kind of get some thoughts out um, okay. and then we'll dive into Q&A. Okay. Okay, so um, just to zip through these, again, we will share the presentation, um, yeah. but just to kind of be able to assess some milestones, um, and really give yourself a pat on the back, you know, as you as you go through this process. Mm -hmm. So the first milestone, and, and this shouldn't take, you know, forever. We just want you to make a commitment to get it done, um, but kind of break it out in a way that you can kind of see, you know, what milestones you've reached on your on the process to complete your will. So again, getting organized and being intentional so you can go through the playbook um, and kind of start to jot down some initial thoughts about the key decisions you will, meet, you will need to make, um, what assets you have, again, as that will help with the process of actually completing your will. Mm -hmm. You also want to determine your how and your deadline. So um, by the end of this, we want to hear what is your personal deadline yeah. for completing your will and how are you going to go about? Are you leaning towards the state planning attorney? Are you leaning towards the legal Zoom, a tool like that? Um, but the second milestone to address is, is how you will and when is your deadline? 
And then the third milestone is actually when you're creating your will, you know, making those key decisions. So we talked about burial versus cremation or who will be, you know, the guardian of your minor children or how do you want your assets to be distributed so those are the key some of the key decisions that you'll need to make and you want to be thoughtful here but don't get stuck you know just get it done and then the final milestone you're crossing the finish line is to get it signed and notarized and witnessed Mm -hmm. um but again because we are our sister's keeper we need to get our loved ones their wills done especially if you're going to be responsible if something happened to them so this is just four milestones to help you make some progress um depending on where you are Mm -hmm. and to really get done in 2023 and then not going to go through this this is something to journal on on your own time but we've broken out your estate planning gps system so knowing what your why is why are you doing this uh what what methods you're going to be doing and what's your personal commitment when are you going to schedule the time to do it so that it is not 2024 2025 and you still haven't done it Where are you going to store your documents? Again, we have in the chat some links to safes because that is going to be super important to be able to protect this legal document. Who who are some of the key decision makers in um, the process of completing your will? How are you going to inspire your loved ones to get it done? So love the idea to write a letter. If you feel like a video might be compelling, doing that doesn't have to be anything produced. Just whip out your phone and just tell your story and speak from the heart if that's a method that you might want to consider. And how do you want to inspire other people to leave their legacy and transfer wealth so that we can normalize these conversations a bit more. So again, we're going to share these slides. We're going to jump into Q&A next, but we encourage you to schedule some time to go through this presentation, to go through the estate planning playbook and get the process started so that you can actually get it done in 2023 right now mention some of these resources again lauren will drop them in the chat about the um safes on on the amazon and also legal zoom as well so we can dive into q a now oh wait before before oh i know that's right let's talk about our product preview Great things are in store for Thank Me Later, Jana. You want to? Okay, just just real quick, we wanted to get some feedback from y'all. So we're we're working on a project, and um, what it will do if when somebody passes away, it will provide guidance on like how to if they have a car, how to wrap that up. If they have a credit card balance, if they have a mortgage. Um, like all of the business, just the checklist of all of the business that will help you wind up those affairs. Would love to know if something like that, um, you think something like that would be helpful. So again, it's just a guide to help you with the business. So that way, when you're wrapping up the business, doesn't take you months and months and months because people can take years wrapping up affairs for people. Maybe it could take now, maybe just a few months possibly. But if you have to call the credit card company, what do you say? If they have a balance, you know, what do you do? Um, so yes, yeah, sounds very helpful. Yes, 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 absolutely. Okay, well, good. And so if you have any ideas, um, of what you think could be helpful um, for people who have been through it. Like if you've been in charge before, like, oh my God, it almost took me out when I had to handle fill in the blank. We would love to know that because we want to make sure, again, you have all the tools you need to be very equipped, very, very equipped. Okay, good. That makes me happy that y'all think it's a good idea. Yay. All right. I saw a couple of questions in the chat and I, we have some um, duplicates. So I want to handle that. First of all, I want to talk about the attorney. Please don't be intimidated. Please don't be intimidated if you need to get one. Um, Cause I know a lot of times, you know, we don't trust them sometimes. We're like, Ooh, you know, this is too technical. This is too hard. Are they really working for me? You know, again, culturally, you know, we fear a lot. Um, but I want you to look for an attorney that has a state, um, that has a state experience specifically. Tiana said it earlier. Lawyers are like doctors. 
right? You have a rash, you, you don't go to the cardiologist, you go to the dermatologist. So lawyers are really the same way too. So please make sure that they have a state experience specifically. Remember your homework assignment, number one, if um, you have some sort of legal aid assistance from through your job, we're gonna tap into that, okay? So that's number one. You wanna check with your benefits. Tomorrow, we're gonna do that tomorrow though. We wanna find out what we have, all right? So that's super, super important. That's homework assignment number one. The other thing too you wanna do is um, you might wanna get a referral from somebody you trust. Maybe it's a colleague at work, maybe somebody from church or an organization that you're in, maybe it's a relative, but you may wanna to talk to somebody, but we're not gonna let this stop us. We're gonna set a date when we're gonna pick our attorney by, okay? So any questions about the attorney, I want to make sure that we cover that because that could be a big hurdle for us. I want to make sure we're getting past the hurdles here. Now, I promise you this, if you take a few minutes and I say an hour, um, 45 minutes or an hour, you go through that estate planning playbook, it's going to make you a little bit more confident. You're going to have a little bit more swagger when you're dealing with this attorney and getting prepared. And that's what you need. You want confidence, a little swagger. So I'm not saying now, you know, you're going to try to pass the bar now, but you're going to feel comfortable when they use certain terminology with you now. And I want you to feel comfortable. All right. All right, Tiana, what's another one of our questions? Yeah, I was just about to hop in. Um, could you talk about a will versus a trust? Like, when do you need them? Um, how okay. They are not the same thing, ladies. They are not the same thing. They are two completely different things. So what a will, a will has a job. The will's job is, the will says, when someone passes away, who is in charge? Who is in charge? The executor. Who is going to raise the kids? The guardian. And then the will also says, who is going to get what? So if you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. My kids are young. I got life insurance money. I do not want them. I do not want my 20 year old or my 17 year old getting all this money at one time. That's when we end up having what's called a trust. So instead of the money or the assets that we own going directly to the person, they now go in trust. So now that means uh, what will happen is when a kid um, instead of this 20-year-old getting your $250,000 life insurance policy all at one time, now the money goes into trust. So it will go into some sort of account, bank account or investment account. Now you've picked trustees. You've picked someone who now will distribute the money to your child based on the guidelines that you set forth. Maybe once they graduate from college, maybe when they get married or buy a house, maybe they get $10,000 a year for the next 20 years. Now there's it, a trust is put in place to protect the assets and also to protect the person who's inherited the assets so they don't end up getting all that money and you look up and then it's gone. Okay. So even though my children are adults, I still have it set up that way today. Um, you know, my children are 28 and 32. I don't want, and I believe that they're responsible. You know, they both work. You know, nobody lives at home anymore, but a lot of young people, heck, a lot of adults aren't equipped to get a bunch of money at one time. So I have the money going into a trust. Then I have trustees, two of them who are going to distribute the money based on the rules that my husband and I say. So I hope that makes sense. Did that make sense, Tiana, the way I explained it? Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense to okay, me. Okay, good, 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 good. All uh, right. Uh, we have a question from Kim that mm -hmm. says, what are your thoughts regarding having the will registered? Okay, so what you can do, and this is what I think you mean, Kim, that a lot of times people, when they have their will done, they will actually take it to their local probate court office. And you can register your will with the court office. I don't have an issue with that, particularly because now you don't have to worry about, particularly if it's an older relative, like, where is it? Is it the most recent copy? Um, most counties i think the county that um i live in it costs maybe like 10 bucks to do it 
So cost isn't an issue, but it, it's a good idea if you want to keep the documents protected. Thank you for that. All right. Yes. So Kimberly, she said she had to hop off, but she has some really great questions. Um, okay. So I want to answer those. Okay. So she said, should you list a minor as a beneficiary for life insurance? Mm. What happens to the money if you do? Mm -mm. Here we go with the trust thing. Because think about it. God forbid, you know, somebody's working. They have this $100,000 life insurance policy and their daughter is 10. 10 like that's and and then who, who who's going to get the money so no i would never name a minor for life insurance i would not so what you can do is if you create a trust which is not that difficult to do i don't want you to think like oh my god how am i going to do that it's going to cost me thousands of dollars no it isn't it could be part of your suite of documents you could say hey go ahead and create a trust for me too you can name the trust as the beneficiary for your life insurance because it's for the benefit of your child please do not put your minor kids there the other thing too for those of you who have life insurance and you haven't looked at your beneficiaries in a while, um, please just take a look at it. Just make sure, you know, someone else hasn't passed away. You know, maybe if you listed one of your kids and they are having some um, personal problems right now, the last thing you would want them to do is get all that money. Okay. Thank you. What's the next, another question? I know we have a lot, so Ooh. you guys, they're with us. Okay, um, we're gonna do the best we can. I'm sifting through. I'm like, these are some really good questions. Um, so Kimberly also asked, mm -hmm. if I say I want my mom to raise my younger child yep. in my will, yes, can I also list another person in the event something has happened to my mom before I can change the will? Absolutely, and that's normal to do that. That's very normal to do that. So you're gonna make you're gonna pick your first person right? And then you can pick, um, I think when my kids were young, we may have had our second and our third person. And don't worry, don't, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, wait, 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 wait. The person who's, I want to raise my kids is not the person who I want to be in charge of the money. That's not unusual either. Okay. Because again, this is about, um, this is all about like morals and they're gonna, you're in alignment of how you want your children raised. You can have someone else say, for example, you're going to set up the trust that you're talking about. The person who's going to be in charge of your kids, the person who's going to be in charge of your kids does not have to be the person in charge of the money. Okay. Thank you for that. All right. Yes. Terry Ann said, after you've completed your will or trust, is making updates or changes difficult or costly? Um, not difficult. I, again, I'm either on my third or fourth set of documents. I just had my last set updated during COVID. Um, and it was really about, oh my God, my kids aren't minors anymore. So now I don't, I don't, I can take out that whole section about who, you know, who's going to raise my kids. And we were able to make the changes. It, it wasn't difficult at all. Um, I, I think it was actually easier now to be able to do that. So I suggest that, um, I suggest that you look at your documents probably about every three to five years. Doesn't mean you have to update them that regularly, but you need to look at them. Because again, if someone is either, they may be, they haven't even passed away, but maybe you wanted your sister to raise your kids and she lived um, in your same city, but now she lives in California. Does that change your decision? Yes, no. You know, so you may want to just, again, kind of take a look at your documents about, you know, every three to five years for changes. All right. We have another question. Um, sure. What When you talked about trustees, what if the trustee passes away? Okay. So you can name, I have co-trustees. So what that means is I have more than one. I never believe in naming one person because I don't think it's fair to give one person that job. I want them to have some balance. So what you will do is even with an executor, that's the person in charge of your will who will wrap up your final affairs. 
You can name either a co-executor, two people who work together, or you will pick the second person. You know, your first executor, maybe they are in the military and they've been deployed out of the country and something happens, they can't even act. You want to have that next person who can step up immediately. So you'll be able to pick multiple people. All right. Thank you for that. Just a few more questions. Um, you talked about probate, but is is that required? Like, do you have to probate the will? Okay. So pro probate gets a little... It's it's kind of a complex term. Like we always don't know what it means. So um, Courtney can speak to this and I can speak to it too. Like when my mother passed away, although she had a will, and although I was essentially almost on every bank account, everything that she already had, I had to still probate her will, which means I, our lawyer had to give me these letters. Um, in New York, they call them letters of testamentary. So I could take that letter and go to the bank and handle the business that I needed to handle. It showed that I was in charge. Courtney, do you remember what the letter was called when you were wrapping up your mom's affairs? Yes, they were um, surrogacy letters. Surrogacy letters. Okay. Um, so that's why different states are going to call them different things. But what happens is you can't just sell your aunt's house if she passes away. You can't just update her title. You have to have proof that you are the person who's empowered to do that. The probate court is who gives you that letter to do that. You don't walk around and take the will everywhere that you go. Oh, let me take the will to the bank. Let me take the will to the mortgage company. You don't do that. You need this official letter from the probate court. That's the reason why probate validates the, okay, yeah, probate validates that the will is legit and that you are the one who's in charge to do it. The problem is when you don't have a will, guess who decides who's in charge? The court. Guess who decides who gets what? The court. And it it's like, who wants them people in your business? And it might not even be the people that you pick to be in charge. So there's a rule. They don't randomly get to decide who gets your assets because every state has a rule. Oh, is husband, wife, you know, children, grandchildren, like how siblings, how all that goes. But now the court will step in and decide who will wrap up your affairs, may not be the picket person that you may have picked, and then also who gets what. That is crazy to me. And maybe I think it's crazy because I just know how crazy my family is. <laughs> I love my family. I'm like, oh, uh -uh, I need to pick who I need to wrap this up because I don't, I know who's going to raise their hand to do the job. And I don't want that person to have the job. Because I just, I know, I'll tell the truth, shame the devil, like they say, love this relative to life, but I know who is going to be jockeying for position to be in charge. That's not who I want in charge. So now I don't have to worry about that. You know, can probate override your will? No, court is not, its job is not to override the will, but it handles all the disputes. So if you know, your grandmother has a will, right? And now you and your siblings, your grandmother left all the land to you and your sister and forgot all your other cousins and siblings didn't leave anything. Your other cousins are like, uh-uh, wait a minute, that's not right. They could go to probate court and say, mm -mm, we don't agree with that. Doesn't mean that they're going to win, but that's where they go to bring their grievances. So probate does not override your will. They validate your will, and now they empower your, your executor who's in charge. So you just think about how hard this is to do all of this. You got to go to court. You don't know what's going on. You got to pay all this money because you haven't gotten a will done. That's why we're saying you have to make it a priority because think about how complicated it is. And you're grieving. And you are grieving. Um, so now, honestly, you, not only are you grieving, you are angry with the person who passed away. You are angry because you're like, how could you do this to me? So that's why, and we're not going to do this to the people that we love.
And we're also going to make sure the people who we know that we're going to be in charge, we're going to make them, this is the year that they're going to do differently because this work will be left up to you. Um, it costs a lot of money and it takes years to wrap this up if you don't have the proper documents. Yes, you will pay a lot. Someone just said that, Tracy. Ultimately, you pay more in probate court than the cost of a will. Oh my gosh. More than likely, you're going to have to hire a lawyer too. How can you navigate all that stuff? It, it's, it's, it's very, very complicated. It's a very complicated. And just having this document, I'm not saying it's going to be perfect, but it will certainly make it a whole lot easier. It will make it a, a whole, whole, whole lot easier. Okay, I hope this helps. How can we get a copy of the meeting? So this is going to be posted where in the Thank Me Later community, correct, Tiana? Yes, but it'll also be on YouTube. Um, so we'll oh, send yeah. out, yeah, the link to the full one. Um, so just give us a few days, but we will send out the resources and yes. the slides tomorrow. So yeah. keep an eye out for that and then we'll send a full recap. And don't be afraid to use this as a conversation starter with your family for the people who don't want to deal with this. Mm -hmm. um this this we can you can you can blame it on us you know go ahead and get the conversation started hopefully this will help yes we have a few more questions in the chat okay. so speaking of probate um Chandra acts or mm -hmm. Shanda I'm sorry I'm saying your mm -hmm. name wrong. um if you register your will in probate court before you die is that public record you know I saw that I'm getting ready to google that right now because I'm not sure okay I'm not sure if it's public because I don't think it should be public because it's meant to be protected in private. I don't believe it is, but I'm going to confirm that though. So I just want y'all to say, I want, I want, you, I want to remind y'all, I am not an attorney. I saw some of these technical questions. I was like, what in the world? I am a CPA Lord <laughs> who is passionate about assets transferring the right way. So for those of you who have some very technical types of trust, irrevocable, revocable and all that, I am not going to speak to that today. But we have, if you have those technical questions, if you reach out to us, I will make sure that we connect you with the right person, particularly if you're in Georgia. This is a layup for me to connect you to the right person because we live in Atlanta. But I want to make sure you get them, but I do not want to take any creative liberty um, with answering some of these more, more technical questions. And I know with the revocable trust, if I'm saying it right, um, yeah. It was addressed in our Black Wills Matter session. So yeah. you guys can refer to the estate plan in place oh. is linked in there. Yeah. Can, you, can you share that resource with people if they want to see our other sessions that we had with Tiffany? Because that would be another good place for people to start. Yeah, I'm going to drop those specific ones in the chat. Um, okay. I'll do that shortly. Um. Okay, someone said how to purchase an orange shirt, assuming you guys are talking about our awesome oh. Lady. Oh, our pink, they're pink girl, they're pink, you know, the, the lighting pink. might be a little bad for me, but uh, yeah. Lauren will drop that into the chat. Yeah, we'll drop that in the chat for you. So again, this is for you to get your head right, get motivated, and, and get ready. Yes, yes. Any, I'm going to drop that in the chat, but any okay. final thoughts, Janai, as I pull that up? No, I just, I just want to say thank you. Not thank you for me, not thank you for our Thank Me Later team, but thank you for the commitment that you're making to yourself, the commitment that you're making to your family. Um, you taking this step, you getting a will done can impact your family literally for generations. That's the impact you have. And, I, and you're like, Janai, I don't have a lot of money. That's not the point. I don't care if you have nothing but $5,000 in a bank account or all you own is a house or a car. That is the beginning of the transferring of wealth. It is critical. That's why Black people start over every generation from the beginning because we're not taking this step. So we're going to take the step today. So I just need you all to commit, set the standard, commit. You're going to have your will done by X date. And we want to hear from you. We want to be on this journey with you because Black women will. We will. We will handle our business. Okay. Lauren is showing her shirt. We will. And this is the year that we're going to get it done. Okay. 
Uh, creating a legacy, thank you, Brenda, is intentional. So again, like, don't think you don't have to be Bill Gates or Oprah to leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. But whatever you have that you've worked so hard for, you've worked so hard, okay? So we're going to be intentional and we're going to make sure we're going to normalize this conversation. We're going to talk to our girlfriends. We're going to talk to our cousins and aunts and uncles and parents and grandparents. We're going to have the people who are in our circle to get it all done. We're going to get it done. All right. So thank you for participating. Please let us know what else you need from us, but check with your employers tomorrow about what legal help you can get. All right. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank one you. More thing, one okay. more thing. Okay. Well, what is our one more thing? What is it? We are so grateful for y'all's presence. Yes energy I'm, I'm going through this chat like oh it was it was popping in here wait right. <laughs> I just thought of some stuff. so for someone that was very engaged I'm gonna yes. give it to Courtney we have a little special surprise and delight so Courtney, oh God, Courtney. yes thank you once again ladies for sharing your stories and your your time with us tonight um I really enjoyed hearing about it and I love learning more about this topic so to kick off the year and to really get us all motivated to get out these streets and out the driveways and onto the road um <laughs> we decided that we wanted to give away um to a lucky one of you one of our black woman will affirmation hoodies um, we absolutely love these and we would love to give it to Krista Scarborough. Um, thank you so much for your engagement tonight, for sharing resources with everyone here. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please be on the lookout for an email from the Thank Me Later team um, asking for more information so that we can get this shipped out to you and get this in your hands so we can see how cute you're gonna look, girl. <laughs> it Listen, Krista, wasn't Krista our Aggie, Chanelia? Right. She was one of the Aggies. Aggie pride, girl. That's what I'm talking about. Aggie pride? <laughs> Aggie pride, Krista. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. No, thank you, Krista. No, you were very, very helpful. Oh, look at Kendra talking about Aggie pride. We deep up in the building. We're deep, uh, always, we're deep up in the building. But thank y'all so much. And let us know how we can serve you and be on this journey with you. All right. We want to know how you're doing. You know, please don't be bashful. Please, please, please let us know what you need from us. Um, let us know what's going on. And, and I don't care if you're like, I don't know where to start. We want to hear from you because we want to make sure that you get it done. Thank you. Thank me later, team. Thank you, Shanelia, for sharing your story. Someone said HBCU love. I see you, HBCU love. We love you. Yay. Thank y'all so much. Oh, yeah. Thank y'all so much. We appreciate y'all. Thanks. Have a good night, ladies. Good night, everybody. Good night.